Adolf Hitler's star is on the rise. His public image is one of a man selflessly devoted to his cause. But the real Hitler is very different. In private, he has fallen in love. The object of his affection is the 23-year-old daughter of his half-sister, Angela. Her name is Gailey Raubel. In 1929, Angela had come to work for him at his plush new apartment, number 16, Prince Regentenplatz. Originally, Gailey's mother was brought from Austria as Hitler's housekeeper, and Gailey came along as part of the deal. But Hitler soon became totally obsessed by this young woman. He was very, very fond of her. He took her everywhere. They would go out to a cafe in town, and she would be there. Um, wherever he went, you know, there would be Gelly. Hitler even supports his niece's musical aspirations, paying for Gailey to have singing lessons. This relationship, despite the fact they're basically related and there's two decades between them, almost seems to be actually a fairly nice, wholesome, sweet relationship. They're going for drives together, they go eating out together. Even today, the precise nature of the relationship remains the subject of speculation. It seems it wasn't sexual. It may sound odd to say that, but it was possession without the sex bit, if there can be such a phenomenon. Uh, fascinating that a man with that degree of power should have been so restrained in that way. It may be he simply was asexual. But by 1931, Hitler's relationship with Gailey starts to turn sour. Naturally flirtatious and vivacious, Gailey's behaviour makes him jealous. She was a normal, red-blooded young woman, wanted to go out, wanted to dance, wanted to wear makeup. All these things were anathema to Hitler's ideas of what a woman should do, should look like, should conduct herself. He starts to take too much interest in who she's talking to. For example, um, his chauffeur, Emil Morris, starts to become close to Gally. Hitler, when he finds out about the relationship, goes berserk. Now, Hitler's well known for going berserk, and Emil Morris is on the receiving end. Hitler, you know, threatens to shoot him. This is the turning point in the relationship clearly between him and Gelly. From now on, everything Gelly does has to be monitored and controlled. If Gelly leaves the apartment, Hitler makes sure she's chaperoned and home early. But as Hitler's possessiveness grows, so does Gailey's unhappiness. By September 1931, the situation reaches a head. Gelly has become increasingly despondent and miserable, as indeed you would be if you were imprisoned by a man that she would describe as a monster. Um, Hitler wouldn't let her go anywhere, and it seemed that she had somehow developed a relationship with a young man from Vienna. It's not just that she's met a young man. It's who he is. The biggest crime in Hitler's eyes about this young man was that he was Jewish. So this is obviously not a fantastic relationship for Gelly to be trying to have behind the back of Hitler. Matters reach crisis point. On the 18th of September, Hitler is preparing to leave for a Nazi meeting in Nuremberg when Gailey becomes hysterical. She wants to go and do uh, singing lessons in Vienna. It all builds up. People start to hear blazing rows inside the flat. 
the next door neighbor says at one point Hitler leaves the flat, turns round as he gets into his chauffeur driven Mercedes and shouts back, You're not going to Vienna, and that's the end of it. For Gailey, the consequences of the argument are fatal. The tragic death of the 23-year-old music student makes news worldwide. Immediately, rumours circulate about the rising politician's relationship with his niece. There were reports that she had bruises over her body that may have come from being punched. These weren't authenticated or corroborated. But it's possible that he lashed out at her I wouldn't say that's proven, but it's possible he did that. Um, it does fit his possessiveness. Rumours detailing Hitler's sex life are also leaked. She was supposed to have told Emil Morris that Hitler made her pose for pornographic pictures naked, uh, standing over him and even uh, defecating on him that Hitler uh, was a coprophiliac. These rumours were seized upon naturally by Hitler's political opponents, especially by the Social Democrats, and they were published in various Social Democratic magazines. Never proved, I must emphasise that. Worst of all are the suggestions that Hitler has either had Gailey murdered or that he's killed her himself. For the would-be Führer and for the Nazis, the potential political fallout from Gailey's death is enormous. So the party's propaganda team act quickly to prevent a scandal. To save Hitler's reputation, members of his inner circle say that Gailey had been playing with a gun and had accidentally killed herself. And they ensure that Hitler will never be seen to have any sort of close relationship with a woman again. The death of Gelly made him realise that actually if he was going to set himself up as this kind of messiah-like figure, he really couldn't be publicly associated with women. He felt that it, had he had a, a wife or female figure in his life, it would have reduced his appeal to German women at large. In keeping with his strategy, Hitler's next girlfriend will be hidden from all but his inner circle. Ava Brown is kept in the background. She is never seen in any photographs with Hitler. For the public, Hitler is married to Germany. The party's PR strategy seems to work. The German people give Hitler the benefit of the doubt and he emerges from what could have been a scandal, virtually unscathed. Now he's ready to move on to the next phase in his quest to seize power.